My name is Barbara Allen. I am author of the book Conquering Arthritis, What Doctors Don't Tell You Because They Don't Know. It's been the number one best-selling book on, arthritis book on Amazon for the last 10 years. Today I'm going to talk about how to make gluten-free donuts using Urad doll flour. This is what the flour looks like. It's just a white powdery flour. It's made from a certain type of lentil and you can purchase the flour at an Indian grocery store. Um, I'm doing this series of recipes just because a lot of my clients with arthritis have a gluten sensitivity and because they, need, they have many different sensitivities besides gluten, I'm trying to make minimal ingredient um, things that will satisfy them even though they can't have gluten. So. I'm going to start with one cup of your red doll flour and then I'm going to mix in enough water to make a smooth batter and it helps if you add a little bit at a time otherwise it can be a little bit clumpy so I make sure it's all mixed in as well as I can get it and then I'll put the next little batch of water in I found that if you make this batter up ahead of time and just let it sit, it gets really creamy, which is part of why I love using this for making donuts. Now these donuts aren't going to taste exactly like a wheat flour donut. They're going to be a little bit heavier, but if you like cake donuts, yum, yum, yum. You can see how it's kind of sticking together and clumping. And bean flours, the trick to using them to get something really creamy and smooth is to just slowly add this water so that you're breaking up any clumps. And again, so I've now added one, one cup of water for one cup of flour. So I want this to be a thin batter, and as it sits, the water will absorb in. So there is a little bit of work up front here, but if you can't have gluten and you're wanting something that's a little bit like a donut, this is really worth it. That's good enough. And then I use sea salt because then you don't have to worry about any other allergens. If you use table salt, the dextrose from that's used to as an additive to keep it from clumping when it's damp outside. That's made from corn and so it creates a problem for many people with corn sensitivities. So just salt to taste. And then let this batter sit at least an hour. It can just, if you're letting it just sit for an hour, you can leave it sitting out at room temperature. If you are going to let it sit overnight, then you can um, put a plate on top of it and put it in the refrigerator. So this would sit. I've already made, made some up yesterday and this is how creamy it is after it's sat overnight. So this is what we're going to use here today. And then whatever oil you use, make sure that it is an oil you're also not reacting to. Most people with gluten sensitivities have many other food sensitivities other than gluten as well. And if you'd like to know how to test for those, you can go to my webpage, conqueringarthritis.com slash A-L-C-A-T, and I give directions for a really good test. Um, so that you can know what all your other safe foods are as well. In this case, I'm going to use almond oil because it works really well with high heat. And I have a pan here that's a donut pan. And what I love about this method of making donuts is even though the batter has a deep fried kind of um, taste and flavor and texture, you're actually not using very much oil and there's no splatter because the batter is on top of this and will keep it from splattering all over your oven. So 
just make sure it's coating and then just add enough batter to fill the basins here, the donut shapes. So now I'm going to put the batter in, in this pan into a preheated oven. I preheated it to 400 degrees. And that should cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. So it's been 12 minutes. This is what they look like. They're still a little bit pale on what's going to be the bottom, but the part that's been frying in the pan should have a nice golden color with it. So now we have donuts hot out of the oven. Sometimes in Indian cooking they're called vatis, V-A-T-I, or singular V-A-T-A, vata. And I like mine a little bit sweet, and even though this is the most beautiful side, I find that if I put some honey on this edge, then it holds it really nicely. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And if for some reason honey didn't agree with you, you could use some other sweetener, like I have raw agave sweetener here, or maple syrup, or if you can tolerate sugar, um, cane sugar, then that would be something else you could use. So, now here comes the taste test. Mm. First off, it smells really good because of the way it's, um, the oil has worked on it. Mmm. Mmm. So I'm tasting the warm honey, and it's just a really divine texture. It's actually fairly light because of the way the batter puffs up when you cook it this way. I really love these hot because I don't taste any of the bean flour taste when they're hot. I can taste it when they're cold, but when it's warm, it's just, it's, it's one of the better substitutes I've ever found for wheat flour. Mmm. Yeah. This is, just feels totally decadent to me. This, the texture, it's light and spongy. It still has a little bit of chewy texture to it, though. Mmm. I think honey is just about the perfect thing with it. And so, gluten-free donuts made with your ad doll flour.